Kazuha is an Anemo support character who groups enemies and buffs your team's damage. His own damage output is also respectable, but it's mainly his support prowess that has earned him a status as one of the best characters in the entire game since his release in version 1.6. His E swirls enemies up and groups them, then allows you to perform a plunge attack, which swirls them again. You can tap his E for a short 6 second cooldown, or hold it for a longer 9 second cooldown, but with stronger crowd control and a wider AoE. His ult creates a wind current around him that infuses elements in the priority of Pyro, Hydro, Electro, then Cryo. The field will change color depending on what element was swirled. Now probably the most important part of his kit is his Ascension 4 passive, which makes it so your team gets an elemental damage bonus to the elements that he swirls. This is based on his EM up to a cap of 1000 EM, therefore when building Kazuha, the goal is to aim for as much EM as possible. Since Kazuha's damage comes from Swirl, and Swirl is based on character level, you want to level Kazuha as high as possible, so that means getting him to level 90. He's also quite squishy, so he'll appreciate the increased tankiness as well. Diving deeper into weapon options, if you have a high refinement Favonius sword, it's definitely a really good option because it, it solves most of Kazuha's energy problems, which makes it so you don't have to hunt for as many ER substats on your artifacts. Nice refinement breakpoints include R3, which lines up with this hold E cooldown, and refinement 5, which will line up with this tap E cooldown. Now there's a weapon that may even be better than Favonius on Kazuha, and it's Xyphos' Moonlight. This is a weapon with an EM main stat, but its passive sort of acts like Favonius' sword. It provides team-wide energy regen based on Kazuha's EM. And since you're stacking EM to begin with, this is very, very good. And it becomes godly at R5. The problem with Favonius' sword is because it's energy recharge, although you don't need as much energy recharge on your artifacts, you will definitely need to find a lot of EM on your substats to make up for the lost elemental mastery. With Xyphos' Moonlight, it provides both EM and energy recharge, which is almost tailor-made for Kazuha. Now Kazuha's signature weapon is the Freedom Sworn, and it's a very good weapon, but I don't really recommend people pull for it because I personally don't think it's worth it, especially because Kazuha works with a lot of weapon options. What Freedom Sworn is good at is buffing your team even more, but it's not really necessary unless you want to do speedruns or nuke showcases. Most of the time, if you have none of the above weapons mentioned, you can just craft Iron Sting, which is an EM main stat weapon, and you can just leave it at R1 because its passive is nothing noteworthy. For artifact sets, you should almost always use 4-piece Viridescent because it helps shred elemental resistance, which goes hand in hand in Kazuha's buffing role in your team. This is one of the most powerful artifact sets in the entire game. For main stats, just stack EM on all your pieces. So EM on the Sands, EM on the Goblet, and EM on the Circlet. If you're using something like the Iron Sting and you're finding it really troublesome to maintain his burst, then you can consider an Energy Recharge Sands. For substats, I would aim for ER until you're around 190-200% to Energy Recharge, then look for as many EM substats as you can, and if you're running Favonius Sword, you want to ideally reach around 20% crit rate. 20-30% to crit rate is generally enough because Kazuo's abilities have good AoE and hit multiple times. And then attack percent is also a nice to have, but not a priority. For talents, none of them are vital to level up, since they don't directly affect his buffing, they just boost his personal damage. But he does do respectable damage, so, so I do recommend leveling up his talents somewhat. All his talents benefit his damage, but I would say prioritize the ultimate first, and then the skill and the normal attack can be leveled up in tandem. For constellations, C1 is fun, but it's not that pragmatic in most situations. It's great for casuals, but it's not as good for sweaty hardcore gamers, since it would increase Kazuha's field time and that would and that would sometimes mess up your rotations. For C2, it's actually really really good, although only for certain teams. It's great for reaction based teams, but it's useless for mono elemental teams or freeze teams. Speedrunners will appreciate this one, and it completely squashes the Sucrose versus Kazuha debate in almost every scenario aside from driving taser teams, though it's no longer a fair comparison since you're comparing a C2 5 star to a 4 star. The rest of his constellations are not noteworthy whatsoever until C6, which turns him into an on-fielder with, inf with an emo infusion, but honestly this is also not worth it. It's not actually that insane, I'd rather save for a different C6 if you are considering a C6 5 star in the first place. So none of his constellations seem too worth it to be honest. 
you can just stick to C0 and be perfectly fine. C2 is a great stopping point if you are seriously interested in pulling for his constellations, but I think Farina C2 would probably be a better investment if you're considering support constellations, and Nahida C2 if you're Dendro main. For our team comps, he can pretty much be used in any Vaporize, Melt, Overload, Electrocharge, or Freeze teams to really good effect. He's also great in Aggravate teams because he can shred and buff Electro while also proccing Aggravates himself. He's also one of the best options for Mono Elemental teams, the ones that can be swirled, so sadly not Geo, Anemo, or Physical teams. And he can be used in pretty much any team that needs a grouper for mob enemies. So pretty much what you should take from this section is that Kozuo can fit in almost any team and he'll be good. Okay, this is probably the most important part in my opinion. There is an important tech to Kazuha called the double swirl. It's a technique that allows you to swirl both elements in a reaction so that you can deal the maximum damage output. It works differently for different characters and certain reactions are easier to swirl than others, but generally the idea is to do a setup that allows you to swirl both elements. I'm going to show you an example for each reaction that I can think of using characters that I own, but again, each setup kind of varies depending on which characters you use. And I'll preface all this by saying if there's multiple enemies, then the easiest way to double swirl is to apply one element to enemy A and another element to enemy B and then swirl both of them at the same time. But I'm going to show you how to do reliable double swirls when there's only one enemy. This should almost work in every scenario as long as you don't mess up the combo. There's probably more than one way to do double swirls, but this is the most consistent way that I have found with the characters that I use. For overworld performance, Kazuha has some neat tricks that you can do. The most obvious one is you can use his E to jump. You can also use his E midair to extend your glide duration and your glide height. And probably my favorite thing about him is you can use his skill to collect all the mob drops together so that you don't have to run around picking them all up. So should you pull for Kazuha? Well, he's not necessary to have on an account. Nowadays, Genshin has so much team variety at the highest level that you don't need Kazuha to have two functioning Abyss teams, but he's as close to a must-pull as I think you can get. He's super fun to play, has the best grouping in the game as of now, he has short cooldowns, insane team-wide buffs, and on top of all that, he has respectable damage output. This is also all while being extremely resin efficient to build, and not to mention he has an awesome Canadian aesthetic and his name is super cool. The only thing he lacks is sustain, but no character can have everything, right? Kazuo performs great in the overworld, and he performs even greater in the abyss. <laughs> 